Settling in their seats, we're getting ready for exciting high school hockey action as both teams are around their goal. We'll do that in 30 seconds from now. The first period brought to you locally by Linda at Chevy Old Shield of Hancock. It's one of a kind, and it's on the lot at Lindra's Chevy Old Shield. Get a 1993 Chevy CK1500 and get $1,000 in instant sales. Both centers are now coming out to uh, take the face off, and we're on the way. And we'd like to welcome you here to high school hockey as the clock starts ticking from the 15-minute mark. The Calumet Copper Kings have the puck at neutralized, and they dump it into the Ironwood end. And right off the bat, Fairfield will decide to cover up, and we'll take it off to his left side for the draw. By the way, it is six minutes after six, six uh, minutes after five central time. You're listening to WJMS in Ironwood and WCCY Houghton Hancock and the draw in the Ironwood zone taken by the Red Devils they're trying to clear it off the side of the board intercepted now by the Copper King shot put on Fairfield tries to steer it in and one of his own players not Fairfield but it would be uh, Kevin Orr diving on top of the puck he was in the crease area and the uh, the yell from the crowd on the opposite side looking for that uh, 
possible penalty for delay of game, but puck was in the crease, and the referees will allow play to continue. We'll want to go to the left side of Kevin Fairfield for the drive. 14.38 left to go in this period, and off the point shot going wide, and the Red Devils will take it now as they intercept the pass and bring it out to center ice. Goes a little bit too far for Dan Barris. In the Copper King zone, they recover. They'll start taking it out once again. This is Pomeroy. Pomeroy getting it across the line. Line shot taken. Fairfield with the stick save as Helmanen took it from just inside the blue line. Red Devils now once again trying to clear. Three saves already for Fairfield now as here's Dan Barris crossing over the line. Gets it off now for Anderson. Anderson going into the corner. Lose control of the puck there. Copper Kings now try and clear. Intercept. Quick shot taken by Lukas. And the save is made by Leppin. So both goaltenders now jumping into the fire. Will take the face off to his left side. That being Leppin's at 13.56 left to go in this first period. Brought to you locally by Linder's Chevy Old Steel in Hancock. 22-1-0 the Calumet Copper Kings going into this contest. Ironwood at 17-6-0. And, oh, and there will be no tie tonight. Off the draw from the line. This is uh, Virgil Barrett. Puck goes wide. Calumet's control. They play it off the far board. And now get it out of the zone. Kevin Oatman bringing it across the line. He has Franti, Eric Franti with him. Pass going off of his stick into the corner. Franti will recover there. Red Devils now trying to poke it away. Puck is spot four still in the Red Devils zone. And it comes out for Mike Conzi. Goes all the way into the Calumet end. The icing is waved off as it's taken there by Joe Goulet of the Copper Kings. They try and work it off the boards. The Copper Kings come back with it. The front line of Pomeroy, Kelvin Sarian, Mark Helmanen are back in there. Actually, it's Pomeroy double shifting on the third line. Excuse me, Joe Goulet with control of it. They have it on the near side boards. Here's Eric Franti. Franti losing it at the point. Puck goes towards the blue line, but it is held in by the Copper King. Now the Red Devils, that's Andy Nesworski clearing it. Here's Eric Potter, the Lake Superior Conference elite team member, bringing it into the zone. The Copper Kings, though, clear it, but not out. Going back for it once again is Joe Goulet. He'll stand by for it, trying to get it up for Franny. Franny backhands it to center ice. Here's Pomeroy. Pomeroy now coming down on the near side board. He's hauled away from the play. The Red Devils are playing some defense now as the puck goes into their zone. And they're able to get it out. Eric Potter to the blue line. Delayed offside call. The Red Devils cleared out. Long pass going off the stick of Matt Smith, but it carries into the Copper King zone. And the Kings will play it from there. Carl Arco whipping it around, but not out from the point. The shot taken. Bouncing. Weapon has to grab it. Making the save. Sort of handcuffed as the puck came up and hit him on the chest. He dropped it to the ground, but was able to glove it before the stick of Brian Nelson was able to do any damage. To check that, that was uh, Eric Potter. Difference between an 8 and 18. All we saw was the 8 from our vantage point. It was Eric Potter who had the opportunity, and now the draw to the right side of Ruffin, and coming out with it is the Copper King. Coming down, two on one, and the pass nicely blocked by number 14, Dan Barrett. The Red Devils are able to clear it and avoid the first breakaway by Mark Helmanen. Helmanen decided to pass maybe a little bit too soon. Now a delayed offside waved off as Buck goes deep in the Calumet end. The Copper Kings are able to recover, but it's quickly intercepted and dropped back in by Johnson of the Devils. Taken there by Carl Arco. He whips it off to the far side boards. 11.33 left to go in the first period. No score. At the FCC, a whistle and a hand pass is called. And they'll uh, take the face off still in the Copper King zone. And you still have time, too. Don't worry about it. Parking might get a little difficult towards the end, but other than that, there's plenty of room for you here at the Ice Arena tonight. The Copper Kings break out after the draw. Great play by Andy Nesworski to hold up the momentum of the Copper Kings. They got to the blue line, a nice poke kept them in the centerized area, and then the Red Devils were able to clear it into the Calumet end. Held in by Virgil Barrett. Now the shot taken from the point by Nesworski, and it's pushed off into the corner. Copper Kings recover. Try and clear it off on the near side. And uh, they'll skate it out. Long pass, though, intercepted by Nesworski. But it's carried in by the Copper Kings. Kingstrom takes it into the corner, backhands it in the Red Devil end. 
Nazwerski is able to come up with it, and he'll play it back out to center. Getting down under 11 minutes. Now at 10.43 left to go in the period, here is Lukic. Lukic gets the pass over for Barrett, but it goes nowhere, and the Copper Kings pick it up off the backboards. They'll skate back with it now. Quick skating, both sides seem to be very familiar as Colossa dumps it in, and uh, they'll change on the fly, that being the Kings. The Red Devils will retrieve it back in their own end. Mark Pomeroy from the far boards, trying to center. Pass intercepted by uh, number 17, Kingstad. Now here's Pomeroy, a shot saved by Fairfield. He'll pick up the rebound, play it to the back board. Kingstad now is able to get it. Came to the point area, not cleared out. Pomeroy will take it from there. Shot taken, hooked up in the air. Knocked out of the club of Fairfield, but it goes behind the net. Here's another drive. And a save. Oh, that one really hit the post. A great shot, a great glorious shot by the Calumet Copper King. But Kevin Fairfield was up to make the saves, and we'll stop the clock with 9.49 left to go in this first period of play, and still no score in this contest got the stick on it or it hit the post but it definitely hit just in front of the goal line and Fairfield was able to grab it to make the save face off going to his right side the kind of Copper Kings trying to substitute but the official said we are set get back on the bench and the draw is taken by the Red Devils going off to the near side boards they'll try and clear it from there here's Smith out the center ice Eric Potter trying to get a burst of steam but he's taken off the play on a nice check by Altman Altman tries to go back to pick it up. Lots of heavy checking going on, as you can hear the roar from the Calumet Copper Kings as they were the ones doing the checking at the time in their own zone. Here's Joe Gillette from behind his own net, almost a giveaway on the pass. It goes off to the near side board. The Copper Kings will try and pass it off the board. They do to center ice, and it gets past Smith. Coming down with it now is uh, Kelvin Sorry, but Kelvin Sorry, while getting ahead of steam, wasn't able to get the shot off, and Fairfield gloves it for another save. In the Ironwood area, many people from Ironwood said uh, for us to uh, give you uh, your best and wish that you were here. It is a beautiful day, and they said it was a great drive from the Ironwood area to come up to the Copper Country today. The Red Devils are able to clear it now into the Calumet zone as we start the play-by-play uh, -play again. The Kings have it from behind their own net. Skating back with it is John Erickson. Erickson with the long pass, and we'll have an icing here, and we'll take it into the Copper King zone. They were lucky to get out of work, but don't tell the boss that they're up here in the Copper Country. So we won't do that. We'll just say uh, we're glad to have those people from Ironwood who couldn't get out of work listening to us on WJMS. The Copper Kings now have the puck in their own zone as they start skating it back. This is uh, number nine. Uh, Corey Rowe losing it, but recovering Carl Arco. Arco now brings it to the blue line. Crossing with 9.28 left to go. Pomeroy, a backhander towards the slot, but it's intercepted. Loose puck, shot taken, but it's knocked down by the defense. And now, uh, sort of a golf shot by Barrett. He wasn't able to golf it out of the zone, though, and chasing it down will be Lukic. Lukic will steer it up towards the point, but not out. Held in by Kingstrom. Kingstrom to the far side board for Franti. Franti loses it as it's kicked over into the corner, still in the ironwood end, and the Red Devils will now try and clear it out. They'll do so. Nazwerski's pass was intercepted by Pomeroy, but they'll have to go to neutralize to get it. They'll take it on the outside boards, working in. Oh, a centering pass! And the Corey Rowe just couldn't get the stick on the puck as he pinched in for that play. Now towards the slot area. Here's Barris once again. Mark Pomeroy looked like he was going to take the shot, and suddenly Corey Rowe was sitting on the doorstep and couldn't one time it in. Puck going over the net. Pomeroy trying to center, but it goes out of the zone. And the Red Devils are able to dump it into the time at end. The Red Devils will change on the fly as the puck goes the length of the ice. We're under seven minutes now in this first period. Here's the Copper Kings once again from their own end. Kingstrom will pick it up on the outside board. Trying to clear it out. He'll skate it out now to center ice. Take it to the near side. Trying to fight the check by Conzi. Puck on the board, and now cleared past the line by the Devils. Pete Berg now trying to pop it in. The Red Devils are able to pick it up. They clear it, but clear it too well, and the op or excuse me, the icing will be called. Fred. The draw comes up between Colossa and Potter. 
To the right side of Fairfield, Topper Kings control. They'll dump it into the corner. Buck travels behind the net. This is Aki trying to pick it up. He'll get it to the near side boards and uh, not out yet as Matt Smith has it. Slow roller intercepted by the Copper Kings. A backhander hits the boards by Kelvin, sorry. Kelvin, sorry, and Colossa go into the boards for the Copper Kings trying to pick it up. Kelvin, sorry, clears it to the point. This is Oten, and Oten loses it. And now here comes Potter. Potter on a slight breakaway. Can't control it, though, and he'll be checked off the puck before he gets it, and it goes into the corner. Copper Kings will skate back with it now. Colossa. Over for Kelvin Sorry. Kelvin Sorry poke checked away. Helmanen has it. Now back to Colossa. Behind the net. Centering pass. Goes past everybody to the point area. Held in by Goulette. Goulette over to the corner for Colossa. He's on top of the puck. Now it's uh, taken by Helmanen. Helmanen will try and get it over for Kelvin Sorry. Now to the centering. And a score! A backhander by Tim Colossa. A slow moving play as the puck came to the slot and Colossa was there with nobody by him. And the backhander makes it one to nothing for the Copper Kings. Time of the goal will be at 9.23. Once again, a slow-moving play set up by Brian Kelvin, sorry, to the slot area where Colossa was sitting on the right side of the net. Tim Colossa with his first goal of the playoff. Makes it a one to nothing Copper King lead. Play now once again, and we'll go for the goal. Wait a second, a quick shot taken by, and now another one going over the net. And there was Clancy as the backhander. And a third time, and does Fairfield have it? Yes, he does. Colossa, we didn't get the first assist, the second assist going to Kelvin, sorry, as you can hear, the crowd is definitely fired up. And uh, Fairfield having to make a surround with the puck, he was forced to make another big save. And off the draw, the Devils are able to clear it back up the center ice. Red Devils looking for a penalty. Fairfield will cover up as Dan Barris was howled out at center ice and the Copper Kings brought it back in. Take it out to the left side and it looks like they're going to allow both teams to play this game on the ice rather than in the penalty box. And it's coming out and to pick it up for the Kings. 4-11 left to go in this period. 1-0, the Copper Kings in the lead on the Tim Colossal goal at 9-23. A whistle. As the play was going over the Red Devil line, we'll have a draw coming up here. I don't think it was necessary an offside, but they possibly they called it down for a hand pass. So it will be Potter going in this time against Pomeroy as the front lines are back out once again. The Red Devils have it. Here's Eric Potter taking the drive. The save by Lepp and rebound. Lepp puts the number 17, Paul Arco, and he'll try and clear it. Goes to the blue line, gets past Dan Collins. The Copper Kings are able to keep it out at center, but the Devils pick it up once again and dump it out. Lepp and stops it behind the net. Here's Potter, though, picking it up on the giveaway. Gets towards the crease. Lepp and pushes it away. Puck still loose behind the net. Here's Matt Smith trying to work with it. Over for uh, Mark Johnson. And now the puck coming loose, and the Copper Kings come back with it. This is Pomroy. Pomroy from the near side, trying to get the pass for Helmanen. He's checked out the puck. He goes to the far side board, and it's a three-on-two back for the Red Devils. Potter from the outside board, working in his centering pass, pushed away, off into the corner by Kingston. Kingstrom, rather, and Kingstrom is able to take care of it for the Copper Kings. Back to the Red Devil blue line, and Mezwerski is the person to dump it now for the Red Devils with 2.56 left to go. Taken there by Mark Johnson. He's sandwiched as the puck goes towards the corner, 
and it's cleared the length of the ice by the Copper Kings and will have an icing called against the Kings. Skilled steal of Hancock. This in wrap up. We'll go to the right side of Weapon for the draw. And it goes behind the Calumet net. Taken there by Oatenin. Oatenin brings it along the near side boards ahead for Franti. Franti out the center ice. Now here's Mark Pomeroy crossing over the line. Working towards the side. He shoots and scores! Just tucking it underneath the goal post. Talk about a one-man wrecking crew. Mark Pomeroy did it all by himself. Looks just like he was deliberately going to skate down there. He told everybody which way he was going to go and then tucks it over the shoulder of Fairfield to make it a 2 nothing game. Time of the goal at 12 minutes and 27 seconds. Your talent on that one for number 16, Mark Pomeroy. And now you know why he was named the Lake Superior Conference Most Valuable Player. Found his spot, picked it, and was able to just tuck it over the shoulder and inside the goalpost. Two nothing, Copper King. So Oatman and Franti get the assist on the goal. Play is at center ice. As the uh, Copper Kings uh, bring it across the line, the Devils are there to recover it. Dan Barris skating with it now into the Copper King end. He's checked off the puck. Now it's jumped in by Collins. Laid outside is now waved off, but the puck is at center ice. Here's Ryan Lukic. Lukic jumping it behind the King net. Puck comes out towards the slot area, but the Kings are able to recover and dump it back towards the Red Devil end. Skating into his own end is Kevin Orr. Orr centering it back to the neutral zone. Puck goes towards Leppin. Leppin will steer it and leave it for Kingstrom. Kingstrom off the far side board, goes off the stick of uh, number nine, Corey Rowe, and back to neutral ice before the Red Devils were able to recover and dump it into the King's end. 117 left to go in this series. Puck is on the far side board. In the Copper King end, we'll stop it there. Ends on the opposite side. It's going to be very, very difficult to try and pick up things off the PA system tonight because they like to steer at a moment's notice. Meanwhile, the Red Devil fans right below us are also uh, yelling a lot, too. And as we look ahead, or look on this side, it's just as crowded as the Copper King end. Colossa going in for the draw against Potter. And the puck goes to the near side board. Puck to the point area, held in by the Devils. It will slowly roll behind Leppin. Now the Copper Kings are going to clear it from the far side. This is Kingston picking it up in the corner along the board. Pushed ahead by Telvin, sorry, but not out. Mark Johnson for the Red Devils, losing as he hits the corner. Telvin, sorry, once again picking it up. He played off the far board. Corey Rowe trying to chase it down, but getting to it beforehand was Alki. Red Devils have control of it. Mark Johnson, long pass to the Calumet Blue Line. Kingstrom is there. 34 seconds left to go in the period. Puck back to the neutralized area where Mark Johnson has him. He'll dump it down to the Calumet end. Weapon leaves it off for Talvin, sorry. Puck being passed on as the Kings are able to clear it. Here's Hellman in now. He has it poked away by Aki. And the offsides is called. Come in. And the puck goes to the near side board, taken by Lukacs. Lukacs gets the long pass over for Barris. Barris now checked out the puck. Turn around, though, and a shot by Anderson just wide of the net. Here's another one, and Leppin has to glove it by Nazwerski from the right point area. And with two seconds left to go, the faceoff will be the left side of Leppin, and we'll see if a Ted Sim is going to pull his goalie, and he will. Kevin Fairfield will step out of the net for two seconds. And it'll be a six on five situation with Eric Potter going for the center. Lukic will be definitely uh, right behind him looking for the puck and having the best alley for a shot on Leppin. But he has to win the draw first. And he'll be going in there against Mark Pomeroy and it goes right towards Leppin. He gloves it, there's the horn. And though Potter had a great snap off the faceoff, Leppin was there 
to make the save. So our first period is now history, and with it, the Calumet Copper Kings go into the early 2-0 lead. We'll be back to wrap it up in 30 seconds. The rivalry between Calumet and Hancock has been so intense to be really strange to see them sitting on the same side. We'll just have to wait. We're into the second period of action now as the puck is dropped. Here's Eric Potter from the blue line, taking it across. He was trying to dump it off for Johnson. His puck is intercepted and sent back out the center. 14.46 on the clock. The shot taken, Fairfield with the save. As the Kings brought it into the zone and Pomeroy took a long one from just inside the blue line. Now from behind the net, here's Selvin, sorry, to Pomeroy, and it was deflected and going over the net. Nice center, here's Kingstrom from the point. His shot is blocked, and an elbowing call is coming up here. And it looks like the first power play of the night is upcoming, and it will be going to the Calumet Copper King. Eric Potter is slowly skating off. And a very, very vicious power play they do have. And it comes just 32 seconds. Down 3 nothing, And right off the faceoff, we're able to dump it down the length of the ice. Calumet quickly getting it back out the center. Puck is loose now against the boards. Albanen got to get it back. For Gillette. Now here's Kingstrom. Kingstrom still in the zone to Corey Rowe. Rowe circling out. Calumet slow on the breakout, but now getting it down into the Ironwood end as they dump it in. Comes off the board. Fairfield will steer it away. And it's dumped from uh, Andy Nazwerski across the blue line and slowly rolls back into the Calumet end. Gillette goes back for the Copper King. Gives it off to Rowe, and Rowe will start the breakout with 112 left to go in the power play. Comes to the cross the blue line. Pomeroy trying to chase. Collins also there. And Fairfield decides he'll stop it before either one gets to the puck. And take the face off to his left side. 13-33. Left to go in period number two. 105 in the penalty. Draw to the left side of Fairfield. Still being fought for. Comes to Orr. Kevin Orr clears the puck the length of the ice. Leppin will stop it as it hits the backboards and steer it to the near side. Copper Kings come back once again. This is Kevin Kingstrom. Or excuse me, Brian Kingstrom. Kingstrom, anyway, with the puck behind the net. Excuse me, it's Greg Kingstrom on it. Now getting it off over to Brian Telvin. Sorry, the shot taken by Rowe and it goes wide. Puck comes off to the near side. Telvin, sorry, once again. Trying to go for it along with Tom Roy. Comes back to Kingstrom at the near point. Into the corner now. Here's Tom Roy from the faceoff. Takes the shot and score! Mark Tom Roy once again doing the lion's share of the work as he took it from the faceoff circle, popped it towards the net, and I believe it went between the legs of Kevin Fairfield. Inside him, he caught the right knee and right into the net, and on the power play goal, Calumet jumps out to a three to nothing lead. So the time of the goal will be coming up at 2.17 into the second period. So Pomeroy gets the unassisted power play goal, and it's the second of the night, third of the playoffs. And the Copper Kings have control of it now as they dump it across the line to center ice. 
Red Devils finding themselves in a hole as we work our way to the beginning parts of the second period. Here's Johnson from the point. Comes up behind the net. Collins now will have it from the point as the Copper Kings try and clear. Collins keeps it in. Goes off to Potter. Now Potter from the corner trying to work with it. Loose puck taken by the Devils. They center. No one home except for Corey Rowe. Rowe trying to steer it out of the zone, but it's held in by Johnson. He'll dump it once again behind Leppin. Chasing it down is Outman. Outman can't control. Over to Franti now. Franti, slow roller out the center ice. Collins intercepts. Hits it off the far side board, but unable to stop the Copper Kings from bringing it into the zone. Saved by Fairfield on a long drive. Potter comes up with a long rebound and brings it back out the center. Corey Rowe, after Potter was checked, is able to pick up the loose puck. Now the Copper Kings coming in on side once again. And it's uh, Matt Kingstad to get the stick down to deflect Arco's shot. High into the air and out of play. And will the Copper Kings uh, going up to the three goal advantage on the power play goal, unassisted by Pomeroy at 217. Shot off the draw, just going a little bit wide. Copper Kings trying to chase it down from the near side. Here's Kingstrom with another drive. And it went up into the netting. Five. Saves right now in the second period. Fairfield with three. Leppin touching the puck once. Puck goes off into the corner. Taken by Dan Collins. Collins whips it behind the net. A couple of uh, players losing them. They're six, one for each side as now the Devils break out with a two-on-one. Shot taken going wide by Kingstad. Buck almost comes out of the zone. Now it does. And it could be a two-on-one for the Copper Kings coming back. Here's Capo. Shot taken on the pass. And Fairfield up for the save. And the uh, net comes off of its boring. And they'll take it outside the zone for the draw. The Kings have the ability to play both styles of play with you. They can go slow and grind it out. They can also turn it into a wide open offense. And they try and let uh, you dictate which style sometimes they you would want to play and then beat you at it. Copper Kings have control of it now. Here's a shot. Oh, just going wide by Telvin. Sorry. Puck comes off to the near side boards. Here's Kingstrom keeping it in. Goes to the slot area. Or deflected high up in the air, goes to the far side boards. He can't get it out. Pomeroy now losing control of it. And goes off to the uh, far boards. This is uh, Lukas. Pass goes off for Barris. Barris long pass for Anderson. Anderson across the line and loses control of it in the Kings. Dump it back. Looks like it'll go a little bit too far. The outlet pass was for Pomeroy. He gets uh, through his stick. He didn't get to touch it, and the icing will be called. The right side of Jeff Leppin. Eric Potter will be back in there for the Red Devils. And uh, he'll be going in against Mark Pomeroy. Pomeroy with Kelvin Surrey and Hellman in on the front line. This is Kevin Outman. The outlet pass. Coming out with it is Pomeroy. Pomeroy crossing over the line. He has Kelvin Surrey on his right side. Pass is blocked by Nizwerski. Goes off to the point area, held in by Goulet. Now it goes off to the near side board. Kelvin Surrey in a scrum in the boards along with Collins. The loose puck squirts off Pomeroy and Nizwerski now trying to fight for it. Eric Potter will come up with it. Potter. Little pass ahead for Smith. Off to the near side for Johnson. Johnson trying to chase it down along with Outman for the Kings. And he'll win the race, that being Outman. Comes back out. Now coming down with this Pomeroy. He's going to be going one-on-one. -on -one. And the shot is deflected by Collins up into the netting. The draw on the far side of the face-off circle. Goes into the Calumet bench, so we'll do it again. Doing it on the uh, edge of that face-off circle closest to the Red Devil blue line. On the far side of the ice. Face-off taken by the Devil. This is uh, Virgil Barrett. Trying to get it across the line, he does. The Copper Kings are quickly there. Pomeroy back to his own blue line. Corey Rowe now trying to dump it on the backhander. He had it slapped right back at him and was in, unable to dump it in the zone. This time will be Kingstrom dumping it in. Slow roller going behind Fairfield, chasing it down. Eric Franti. Franti can't control. Loose puck now in the corner. 
Red Devils come back with it, get it out the center ice. The Corey Rowe is once again there to dump it in. The delayed offside called off now that Franchi comes back across the line. Red Devils though, are able to control and get back out to the neutral ice while the Copper Kings were waiting to get back onside. Now the Red Devils will have to deal with the delayed offside. The Copper Kings cleared out the neutral ice. Red Devils intercept there. This is Virgil Barris. Barris dumps it down into the Copper King end. Kings will skate towards the corner to chase it down. Carl Arco. Kingstrom playing it off into the far corner. Arco trying to chase it down along with Eric Franchi. Kevin Fairfield way out of the net watching the action. As the Kings now start bringing it in. He'll slowly go from the slot into the net. But a nice thing will be called. A very impressive crowd. Something that the Michigan High School Athletic Association would like to see and should see. Be nice to finally get a state championship game back up here. And I'm sure the crowds, uh, not only from the Ironwood area, but also from the Keweenaw, as Mr. Dorham would always say, would, would definitely come up here in droves and show them how to really put on a state tournament. And this is what it's all about. A great crowd here. Both sides are quiet right now, as uh, the action has been pretty much uh, going from side to side with icings and, and a couple of off sides. But right now, the Copper Kings have control of the puck as they try and clear it out. It's held in. There's Wierski with a drive. Stopped at the slot before it gets 11. The Copper Kings get it out to center right. Here's Tim Colossa, the guy who scored the first goal tonight for the Copper Kings. And he's put on uh, his backside. Heavy check from the Red Devils. Come back with it. Dan Barrett coming in across the line. Flies it towards the slot. Leppin puts it on. And going into the net, Randy Anderson putting out a whole head of steam as he was trying to pick up the puck in the slot area before Leppin could get to it. Once Leppin cleared the puck, Anderson had nowhere to go but to duck his head and slide in the net. He went up to knock it off the netting and they'll take it outside the zone. And we'll have to draw on the near side of the ice here right on the King blue line. Potter once again going against Pomeroy. Pomeroy wins the draw, gets the King from back to Pomeroy. Pomeroy across the line. There's a little pass off for Franti. Now a shot just going wide as it was pushed back to Pomeroy as the Red Devils were deflecting it, but Pomeroy one-timed it right back towards the net. Kingstrom will have to chase it down after the deflection. Now it goes to Arco and out to center ice. Corey Rowe bringing it in offside. His left foot was uh, ahead of the line as he was finally able to control the pass at neutral ice. Saves are 16 and 11 for the uh, game. Fairfield now with a total of four for the period, two for Leppin. It's getting to be more of a cat and mouse game, not like the first period of play where there's lots of opportunities, lots of skating and some heavy checking. Both sides have uh, worked it in a score. Uh, talk about a slow play set up by Eric Branty. And the Copper Kings get on the board once again. Pass came out to Franti. Happened to be all alone. Gave it to Kevin Fairfield. He had clear sight of it. Here to make the save. And then it slowly rolled between his legs and into the net. 44 seconds. So a four to nothing game. Red Devils now have to score that next goal if they want to get back into this contest. Here come the uh, Red Devils. Shot and scores! They caught the top of King Zapping. Get credit, I believe, to Matt Smith for that one. set up at center ice, a two-on-one situation. And Matt Smith breaks the shutout. Time of the goal will be at nine minutes and four seconds. So Smith equals Franti's goal.
with the assist for the Red Devils. And at 9.04, it's a 4-1 to game. And it seems to have given a little bit of life to the Red Devils as they have it in the zone. Now a whistle, and it looks like an interference call. And a power play coming up for Ironwood. Tim Colossa will be going in. Ironwood's first penalty, the first power play of the night. And let's uh, check our score sheet from the night before. Ironwood had four chances on the power play in their game against the Lakeland and Hubble Lake. And we're 0 for 4. See if the, their fortunes will uh, be a little bit different. Right off the bat, the Copper Kings are able to dump it down the length of the ice. And at uh, center ice, the uh, Red Devils, Collins, trying to take it off the board. She has it taken away by Telvin Sari. Telvin Sari dumping it to the blue line. Copper Kings trying to control it, takes some time off the clock. 1.25 left to go in the power play. Puck goes behind the net. Red Devils will have to start deep in their own zone. Here's Nesworski. Nesworski trying to get the pass ahead for Lucas. And as it came back up to center ice, the Copper Kings put it in offside. Once again, problems with the PA system. We're checking to see uh, who assisted on Frankie's goal this period. But uh, right now, it's no avail. And that includes the official score, too, because he just waltzed over here shot from uh, just outside the blue line and Leppin's able to pick it up as Kevin Orr came up with a hard slapper with Potter. Draw goes to Kingstrom. Kingstrom though, unable to control it. Potter puts it towards the net. The Kings are there though and they're able to clear it. In fact, into the Calumet crowd. So once again, it will be Potter and Pomeroy on the drop. 54 seconds left to go now in the power play for the Red Devils. Potter wins the draw this time. Back to the point for Orr. To Alki. Alki to the slot. And it's intercepted there by Kingstrom and driven the length of the ice. Orr will take it from the far side board. Getting it to Johnson. Johnson ahead for Smith. Smith. Centering to Potter. Score! Kingstad this time, going in against Pomeroy. Pomeroy is out there with Helmet in and Rowe. Blue liners right now. Out there are Goulette and Outman for Calumet. Puck goes to the far side boards. Calumet Copper Kings trying to control it there. This is Pomeroy. Pomeroy checks in the boards twice. Corey Rowe picks up the loose puck. Goes back into the far corner. Where the Red Devils try and control it there. Goes out the skate of King, uh, Kingstad, but they were able to clear it out to center ice. Collins trying to, or excuse me, Conzi trying to chase it down. Taken by Outen and Outen it back out to the 
center ice area. The Red Devils are able to put it right back in. Here's Comsey going into the corner. His centering pass towards the slot. Nobody at home except for Blue. And the Carver Kings come back with it. This is Pomeroy from the near side. Gets past the man. Takes the shot and scores! Here's a hat trick. He makes it look so easy when he gets that chance. And Mark Pomeroy makes it now a 5-2 game. 12 minutes. And six seconds into this period. And don't be surprised if you see if Mark Conway picks up his second unassisted goal. He has Fairfield's number tonight like you wouldn't believe. Howard James Brewer, scored by number 16. So Pomeroy with three already through two periods, and yes, it is an unassisted on the giveaway. And just Deke Fairfield once again, and picks it up at 12.06. Now the Red Devils trying to go, and Weapon has to put it between his pads. So a nice shot was set up to Ryan Lucas. This contest, the 2.35 left to go in the second period of play. It's 5-2 Calumet. Weapon has to steer it off the faceoff. Goes to the far side board. As Kingston pushes it there, the Red Devils keep it in. Now the Copper Kings will try and work it out once again. Here's Brian Kelvin, sorry. Can't control it. Pomeroy now will pick it up. Still deep in the Calumet end. Off to the far side board. Frankie trying to clear it out. And he must get it across the blue line because they'll call the outside here. Stop the clock at 2.13 left to go in the period. Lake Superior Conference, most valuable player, certainly lighting it up today. Changing the time, we already had that down anyway, so 10.54, the time of the iron would go, and Copper Kings have a chance on the backhander. Fairfield there to make the save, and here comes the Red Devils right back. Ryan Lukic loses it as he gets to the blue line. Alki now trying to pick it up. And a whistle, they'll call it offside as uh, Dan Barris drags it in. Stop the clock with 11.40, excuse me, 1.47. Left to go in this third period. Corey Rowe, row out with uh, Kelvin Sari. And uh, Eric Franti on the draw. Now here's Eric Potter. Potter crossing over the line. Leaves it for Smith. Puck goes loose and hits the backboard. Smith, backhander behind the net. Coming out on the near side now. The chase is on. Held in at the uh, point by Collins. He'll get it off the chest to Potter. Potter will recover. Trying to carry it up over his stick and went into the netting. Jason. And since it's 10 after 7, we'd be amiss of not uh, saying it's time to take your little station ID. You're listening to High School Hockey and WJMS Ironwood, WCCY, Houghton Hancock. The draw outside the uh, Calumet blue line on the far side. Potter going in against Tom White. Potter won it, but it goes right to the Kings. The Kings have it at center ice. Now the loose puck. Take in mind Nozwerski. Tries to get it in. They are able to dump it behind the net. Leppin will steer it to the near side boards, but not out. Centering pass, the weapon will glove it quickly before Potter gets to the crease. And Kingstrom and Potter rub shoulders in conclusion of that play. To the right side, Jeff Leppin. Potter will go in against Pomeroy on the draw. And it goes to the backboard. There, Potter trying to grab it there. He's hauled out of the play. Corey Rowe trying to dump it. Now Johnson comes up with it for the Red Devils. We're under one minute left to go in the period. Calvin, sorry, comes up with it. Plays it off the boards to center ice. Stopped there by Nezwerski, but it goes right to the stick of Kingstrom. Crossing over the line. Here's Greg Kingstrom to the backboard. He loses it. Potter can't control. Dan Collins now trying to work it from behind the Red Devil net. He kicks it ahead. To the far side boards. He's called down and a penalty coming up here. And a hooking call going up against the Calumet Copper King. And the call comes here. 
at 14.27, and at the same time, in the corner, is Corey Rowe to the whistle. Coach Jim Crawford walking out there. Rowe getting himself to his feet. Brian Calvin, sorry, is through the penalty, will be called on. Penalty to the conference game. Number seven, Brian Kelvin, sorry. So the uh, tripping call going to Kelvin, sorry. Oh, they're going to call it hooking instead. Potter was hauled down. Uh, that way it, it's a lot nicer going into the intermission that way, but I'm sure the Copper Kings are going to be especially wary not to give up that last second goal here. Here's Barrett. With the puck, he loses control of it to Pomeroy. Pomeroy plays it back to his own blue line. Kingstrom clears it down to the Red Devil end. 18 seconds left to go in the period. Puck gets past Orr. Now almost a giveaway to Pomeroy, and you don't want to do that. Here's Kevin Orr once again with six seconds left to go. Barris has it crossed over the line. Shot taken, Leppin steers it to the glass. That will do it for the second period of play. And uh, we're done with two. And Mark Pomeroy has the hat trick now through two. And that's the difference in our contest. As <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, Michigan Tech SDC. We're getting ready for third period action. And as we do, uh, minute 27, we'll be on the clock for a penalty, which will be going to uh, uh, Brian Kelvin, sorry. Both sides are back out on the ice. We're getting ready for a third period action, and uh, we I know we uh, owe a 30-second break. We'll take that at the first opportunity. It's Pomeroy going in against Potter on the draw. And it's taken by Potter. Crosses over the line and offside. On the uh, fourth goal of the night for Calumet, Mark Pomeroy is uh, fourth point of the night, and that comes up at 8.44. So five goals, and uh, Pomeroy is on all of them except for the initial goal which came at 9.23 of the first period. Pomeroy getting the hat trick, almost a natural hatter in the second period. Closing out the scoring at the 12.27 mark of the second period, or first period, and then of course uh, adding it to the two other goals, both of them unassisted in the second period of play. Face off with a minute 23 left to go on the Ironwood penalty just outside the Calumet blue line. Here's ne uh, Nezwerski picking it up. He dumps it across the line. Pomeroy is there to quickly bring it back out the center eye. Nezwerski intercepts that pass, dumps it in long shot. Lepino glove it. He'll leave it off for Kingstrom. Kingstrom trying to uh, get the outlet pass. That is intercepted. Taken by Mark Johnson. Now it gets towards the front. Potter slams it in off the rebound. And that's what they had to do, get on the scoreboard quickly. 27 seconds into this third period. And Eric Potter now with his second goal of the night. And his fifth. And the second power play for Ironwood tonight. Both Leppin. Off the rebound. So it's 5-3. to three, And the Red Devils are still breathing in the playoffs. They needed that one definitely while they had the opportunity. Puck getting off the Potter now in the county, but Ed can't pick it up off the board. Go for the goal. So Johnson is fifth on the assist. On the power play at 27 seconds, making it 5-3. to three. The Kelly McCopper Kings holding on to the two-goal lead. And the Copper Kings have it right now in their own end. Goes out the stick of Kelvin, sorry, out the center ice. Quickly dumped back in by the Red Devils. The bronze Alki had stole it. Now from behind the net, a backhander. Potter comes up with it. All the way from the play with Smith. He was wrapped around by Alton, and now a backhander. Smith is sitting there. Oh, he had the net wide open. He couldn't get the wood on the puck. The Red Devils putting on the pressure here in the early parts of the third period of play. Saves are even at 18 now as all the uh, shots on goal, and most of the action has been the Calumet end. Jeff Weapon leaving in for Outman. Outman now. He'll uh, skate it up for the Calumet Copper Kings. Slow pass over for Helmanen. Helmanen's pass is intercepted by Anderson. He skates with it, tries to get it ahead for Barrett. His pass is intercepted. 
And Joe Goulet is able to get it across the line. Here's Mark Pomeroy from the near side. Saved by Fairfield. A wide angle shot. Now the outlet pass coming out for Barris. Barris one on two and quickly picking the pocket is Carl Arco. Arco now skating back with it, but he's unable to get it past the point or intercept. Dumps it behind the net. Here's Kingstrom. Kingstrom now. Getting it ahead for the Copper Kings off the center eye. Just to the blue line. And now Orr intercepts once again and dumps it into the Calumet end. Here's Arco. As the Calumet Copper King fans are trying to start urging their team. It's awfully quiet though on the Calumet side. And the Red Devil side is starting to, to do a little bit of murmuring. As they can see themselves getting back possibly into this game. Here's Corey Rowan drive. And Fairfield with the save. Kevin Fairfield taking a chest high and then putting it in the glove. And we'll stop the clock with 12-12 left to go in this third period. Looks like they're going to be getting another assist. The number 12, Mark Johnson. So Johnson getting an assist on the goal from Smith and Alki and Johnson. And uh, that 9.04 goal, of course, was the first goal of the game for the Red Devils. We have the face-off to the left side of Kevin Fairfield. Kingstad going in with Colossa. Saves now uh, up on the board. 21 for Fairfield, 18 for Leppin. So the Copper Kings are putting a few shots now on Fairfield as we get into the about uh, three minutes into this third period of play. Here's Colossa going into the corner now, trying to control the puck. He gives it away for Nizwerski. Nizwerski now trying to work with it. Off the near side board to Brian Nelson. Copper Kings trying to keep it in the zone. Setting pass for Kingstrom, and he fans on the shot. He had Fairfield beat, too. Nice setup by Colossa. Colossa goes into the boards. Nizwerski now will wrap it around, but not out. Held in by Arco. Arco dumping it behind the net. Colossal with a centering pass. Nobody holding out. Kingstrom picking up the blue line. He tries to center. Intercepted by Conzi. Back to the slot a third time. And finally, the Red Devils decide, let's get rid of the pressure, and they'll ice the puck. 11-18 left to go in this third period of play. A 5-3 Copper King margin. Face off, controlled by the Copper King. Backhander tried to be played on there by Helmanen. Gets past him and coming back with it is Mark Johnson. Johnson now jumping it behind the Calumet net. The chase is on. Taken there by Goulet. Goulet over to the far side board. And the Copper Kings are able to clear it out. Helmanen able to pick it up. Can he get past the defense? He shoots. And the save is made. And Fairfield once again up to the task as the puck came off the near side board. Helmanen had to come down one on two and basically make the play by himself. And we'll take the draw going off to his right side. The power play, 27 seconds into the third period. And now Fairfield unable to control the puck off the draw. And finally, the fence steps in. And they'll get an icing out of this. But uh, the best part about it is, is that they're unable, or they were able to stop Calumet from scoring quickly off the draw. Fairfield now with a total of five saves so far for this third period of play to two. For Jeff Leppin. Puck is around the faceoff circle. The linesman is in there. That's why you hear the crowd yelling. Controlled by Pomeroy. Pomeroy plays it to the corner. Puck comes right back to him now. And he'll play it behind the Red Devil net. Comes out for Johnson. Johnson now from the far side. Gives it ahead to Potter. Potter now trying to work around Arco. He centers the Smith. Smith shot. Hits the post. He hit the far post on that one. Almost bringing the Red Devils within one. Eric Potter. Has it now at center. Has it poked away by Pomeroy. Comes back for Johnson at his own blue line. He'll dump the center. Pomeroy will take him in the neutral zone. Trying to get it for Hellman. A little bit too far for him. There's Worski now. Over for Smith. Smith losing it off the stick to Pomeroy. Back to Kingstrom. Over for Kelvin. Sorry. Kelvin. Sorry. From the far side board. Puck rolls into the corner. Taken by Dan Collins of the Red Devils. Get it out to Nezwerski. Nezwerski up for Smith, and they're out of the zone. They're, Smith crosses over with 9.40 left to go in the period. Loose puck over for Johnson. Johnson plays it behind the net. Nezwerski from the point, and it goes into the escape, and coming back with it now is uh, Elmanen, and a whistle as the puck goes in offside. Ben. 
Zdorski now from the near side boards. Gets it out to center. Dumped in by Anderson. Or check that by uh, Gillette. Gillette now. Puck rolls out from the far side boards. Here come the Red Devils back out with us. This is Lucas. He loses control of it. Going into the uh, corner is out in it. He'll get it ahead for Pomoy. Pomoy over skates the puck. Now a backhander coming out for uh, Franti. Franti takes the shot. Goes wide of the net. May have been deflected off the skate. Fairfield. Another uh, try going wide. Now the puck comes out to center ice. 8.30 left to go in the third period. Red Devils need two to tie. Copper Kings trying to hang on for their trip into the Saturday final. Here come the Kings back. Puck slowly rolls towards Fairfield, but before it gets there, Orr will pick it up for the Devils. Some of the Devils changing on the fly. Potter was cherry picking. Now he's able to get the pass from Smith. Comes in, one man to beat. Gets it into the slot area, but the Kings are able to push it aside. It looks like we've got a penalty coming up here against the Kings. And a holding call. Giving Ironwood their third power play. Power play, but right now, Ironwood is two for two on the power play tonight. The holding call. And the third straight penalty going to the Calumet Copper Kings coming up at uh, seven minutes and two seconds. And it'll be going to Kevin Outman. Penalty to the Copper Kings number three, Kevin Outman. Two in line for holding. Time so Outman with the holding call at 7.02. And the power play starts deep in the Red Devils end after the Copper Kings knock it down the ice off the faceoff. This is Dan Collins trying to get it for Smith. Gets past him. Copper Kings are able to dump it down once again. Fairfield has to make the stop. Nesworski will start it up once again for the Red Devils. His pass for Potter gets a little bit past them, and the Copper Kings take it from their own line and dump it down once again. Minute 23 left to go on the power play. Elvin, sorry, intercepting, but he can't get a pass off, and the Red Devils come once again. The icing is going to be called. And one of tonight's officials uh, slipping on the side. That's why you hear all the yelling. Everybody likes the referees when they fall. Face off uh, to the left of Fairfield, held in by Calumet. Goes off the linesman, and Anderson is able to pick it up. He gets it off for Lucas. Pass over now for Barrett. Barrett gets hit. Loose puck going towards the slot area. Leppin will steer it away. 56 seconds left to go on the power play. Orr pinches in, trying to get the puck. He able, is able to control it. Skates along the blue line, flips it up in the air. Grabbed by Kingstrom, dropped down over for Kelvin Sari, and he clears. 42 seconds left to go in the Red Devil power play. They're down five to three. Puck intercepted. And dumped back into the Red Devil end. Now it gets past Anderson at center ice. Taken by Arco. Arco trying to clear it. He'll take it on his own rebound and get it to the Red Devil blue line. Or from that area. Backhands it, flips it up in the air, knocks down. That clicking sound that you heard was Kelvin Sorry's stick as he was able to reach in the air and just knock it down into the Red Devil end. Red Devil's now once again controlling. They'll get it ahead. Just dump it a little bit across the, the uh, blue line. Arco has it there and out the center. This is Orr as both sides now are at full strength. 5.55 left to go in the third period. And because of the uh, both sides of full strength, the Copper Kings will have to deal with an icing. Game number two coming up, the Jeffers Jets and the Hancock Bulldogs. And, of course, our piece in time will bring you uh, all the action starting at about 20 minutes till 3. Here's now Eric Potter on the draw. Trying to pick up the loose puck. Can't do so. Copper Kings come out with it. Ori Rowe crossing the line with 5.42 left to go in the third period. Has it poked away from him by Nazworski. 
Here's Puck now brought back to center ice. Here's Potter. Pass over for Johnson as they cross the line. His shot going wide. Red Devils still need two to tie this contest. One at least to get a chance to pull the goalie. Here they go! Loose puck on the giveaway goes to Johnson. Weapon wasn't ready. He beat him on the right-hand side from about 15 feet away. And it's a 5-4 game. As the Red Devils are back in it in the third period. Going two on after goals. This one at 9 minutes and 37 seconds. Look for this one possibly to be an unassisted tally as it was a giveaway. It came right to the slot from 15 feet away. Johnson slammed it home. That brought out some of the uh, Hancock Bulldog players quickly out of their locker room. Number 12, Mark Johnson. Assisted by number 18, Eric Potter. So Potter on the assist. So both uh, forwards on the elite team, Mark Conroy and Eric Potter helping their sides. Here's Johnson again off the draw. Loose puck goes into the corner, taken by the Calumet Copper King. Now Johnson once, away, uh, once again poking it away. Puck loose to center. Johnson will dump it down into the Calumet end. We're under five minutes, 5.58, as it looks like it's going to be a humdinger of a finish here at the SCC. Here's Johnson once again, a backhander crossing over the line. Puck headed towards Weapon, stopped by the King. Jumped down by Gillette. Over to Pomeroy, it's center ice. He stops at the blue line. Make sure everyone's on side. They weren't. The delayed outside waved off as the Red Devils come back with it. Here's Nazwerski, long drive, going wide of the net. Heading out for Kelvin, sorry, in his own zone. He backhands it off the boards to Rowe. Rowe gets it to the Red Devil blue line. Ron Zaki. Now controlling it, a backhander for Anderson. Got it to the Kings line, but that's about it. Calvin, sorry, trying to chase it down. Picked up by Houghton. Houghton can't control it. Puck is still loose at center. Now finally jumped into the Kings zone by Alki. Four minutes left to go in the third period of play. A five to four Calumet lead, which was five to two at the start of this third period. Here's a drive, just going wide. Copper Kings now controlling it, still in their own zone. Mark Pomroy, pass going a little bit too far, but Fairfield will have to uh, play it, and he'll grab it, and he'll stop the clock. Saves in the third period. Fairfield right now sitting with eight. Well, Leppin with a total of three. But five of those uh, five shots on goal, two of them going in for Ironwood. Potter at uh, 27 seconds on the power play. Johnson from Potter at 9.37, making it 5-4. to four. Number one versus number six in the state of Michigan, and they're really making a state championship contest out of this one. We're in the Red Devil end. Huck's going ahead for Smith. He'll take it at center ice. Arco slaps it away. Helmand trying to dump it, now Potter takes it. Trying to get ahead on the near side board. His pass intercepted. Dumped in, or will have it there. Goes off the skate of Smith, the center ice headed towards the far board. Corey Rowe trying to work with it. Now it's dumped in by Johnson. Johnson will take it into the zone. Couple of the uh, Devils changing on the fly. Johnson controls it behind the net. Now it's poked away by Arco. Arco gets it off to the corner for Kelvin, sorry. His pass is intercepted. Held in by the Devils in the slot area. Leppin kicks it away. Still loose. Now the Kings are coming back. Two on two, possibly a three on two if they hurry. Here's Kingstrom from the near side boards. He'll skate behind the net. Centering pass. Where is it? And finally, it's at the side of the net. Fairfield just be able to keep that skate. It's off to his right side. Pomeroy going in against Potter. You'll see a lot of the front lines here with 2.34 left to go, and Fairfield decides to cover up. The crowds are getting tenser as we're down to the last 2.31 of regular conclusion. If the score gets tied, here's Arco. Arco trying to slap it in. Stopped by Lucas. 
Now the puck comes back up to center ice. Kings dump it back in, delayed offside, now waved off as the Devils chase it down. Nesworski will pick it up behind his own net. Gets it back up to center ice. Carl Arco once again just taking it, dumping it in. Now anybody copper kings is saying, hey, take the game to us. We'll go ahead and let you waste some time off the clock. Looks like we're going to call nice thing. So they'll take it to the left side. Fairfield, and now officials are discussing some things. They're talking to uh, Ted Sim as he's trying to discuss the icing call. I believe that's with Joey Romano. Now, of course, with that situation, you got to Go over and explain it. Paulie Lato. He's wondering what's going on. Why are you bringing up 2.01 is the time left on the clock. Taxation. And we'll go right back to center ice. Pomeroy against Potter for the draw. And the draw comes out to the Copper King. He'll play it off the far board, so jump quickly in there by Dan Collins. The Devils try and chase it down as it picked up by Gillette. Gillette plays it off the board. Pomeroy steers it out of the zone. Almost got ahead to Franti. Now Pomeroy takes it. Mark Pomeroy trying to work it around. Franti turns around. His shot is knocked down. We're down to a minute 39 left to go in the third period of play. Here's Kingstrom. No, they say it hit the goal post. Wow, right from the point area. Kingstrom almost had the icing on the cake for the Kings, but the post was there and Potter comes back with it. Eric Potter from the far side just checked out the puck. We'll be watching to see when Fairfield leaves the net. 115. Centering pass. And it goes to the backboard. Johnson couldn't get the stick on it. A minute nine left to go in the third period of play. And it's dumped in by the Calumet Copper Kings. One minute left to go. All the Iowa Red Devils are standing up on their bench. We're at the blue line. Pomeroy whistle. Pomeroy takes it in off sides, and then it's a meeting of the minds between Collins and Pomeroy as they just stand and discuss things with each other. And we'll take it out with 53 seconds left to go. Neither side is taking their time out yet. See if they, uh, looks like they aren't going to do it. Fairfield now not having the opportunity with this face off to leave the netting. Five for the score. The Copper Kings in the lead. It was 5-2 though after the third period, and now there is a timeout. So while there is a timeout on the ice, we're going to take a 60-second timeout. Three seconds left to go in the third period of play. The faceoff just outside the Red Devils zone. Potter against Pomeroy. And the Devils have it, but in their own zone. Collins will take it. We'll be watching Fairfield to see if he comes out of the net. Puck poked away. Now Nesworski will have it. Pass goes to the Calumet blue line. Backhanded by Goulet. Goulet getting it over for Pomeroy. 36 seconds left to go in the third period. Collins, Calvin, sorry, goes to Fairfield. He has to make the save. 32 seconds. Left to go in the third period of play. It's a 5-4 to four contest. Calumet in the lead will take the draw to the left side of Fairfield. First three games have been pretty easy to call once it got towards the end of the third period. The winning team pretty much had it uh, by the second half of the third period on ice. Here's a shot! Oh, just over the glass. Joe Goulet had a chance that time. 23 seconds left to go. Here comes Potter, possible two on one. But the Kings get back to it real quick and tie him up. Couple of Kings changing on the fly now. Fairfield out of the net. Does Whiskey from the point with 13 seconds. Loose puck in the slot, pushed away by Kingstrom. Held in at the point area. Now it's back, here's Potter, a shot! Oh! A chance for Lucas, 
He was sitting on the doorstep for two seconds, one second, and that's it! That is it! The Ironwood Red Devils had their chances. Ryan Lukic couldn't control the puck on the left side of the net as it was set up, but it was very high. It would have been just impossible to grab that puck. And it ends up being a 5-4 to four victory for the Calumet Copper Kings, their biggest scare in the tournament so far. And they'll go to the state regional championships on Saturday. We'll be back to take a look at this. Thank <laughs> you.